closing thing, I thought maybe I've learned a lot. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. I thought maybe I'd give you a list of some few things that have helped me redirect myself when I realized I was doing the wrong thing. So just real quickly here are nine keys uh, that have served me well over the years. I have I've wandered from them, but when I come back, I'm usually happy. They're quick. Uh, if, you ever, if you want them after the talk, I can, I can get them to the dean and get them to you, but very quickly. And I've said this before, do not presume fame or fortune as your reason for being. Pursue the passion and a life that makes a difference in the lives of others. And here's why you can do that, it's win-win. If you do that, you'll be better at what you do, you'll be happier doing it, and the odds are much greater you'll be extraordinarily successful. So the chances are you'll get the things you thought you wanted as a result of going about it a different way. But if you don't, here's the magic, if you don't, it won't really matter. So either you'll get them anyway, or you won't, and you'll be so joyous about what you're doing, it won't matter. Two, do not get confused about the true definition of success. It is measured by who you are, not what you achieve. Three, always be willing to climb the steps when those around you are waiting for the elevator. Don't take the easy way. Four, approach any unexpected or undesired ending, of which I had several in my life, as an opportunity for a new and exciting beginning. Five, be willing to take some risk, even if it means you might fail or fall short. Be willing to take some risk. Six, always be willing to use the wisdom of hindsight as a tool from which you can learn Never, never use the wisdom of hindsight as a tool from which to judge, not yourself or others. Seven, treat yourself as if you were your own best friend. When you mess up, treat yourself the same way you'd, mess up, you'd treat your best friend if they were messing up. I had a regular golf course in down in Greenville, and finally a friend of mine wrote me a letter, and he said, you punish yourself on the golf course. If I miss a three-foot putt on the last hole and we lose the match to these two enemies of ours, which were our other best friends. You come over and you hug me and you tell me, that's great, Joe, and don't worry about it. I still want to be your partner next week. You'll make it next week. You make me feel so good. He said, when you miss that three-foot putt and cost us the match, you're killing yourself. He said, you've got to learn how to treat yourself as if you were your own best friend. Eight, never move forward at the expense of your faith or your family. And nine, learn the difference between an inner joy which is permanent and a natural happiness, which is fleeting. The closure I've got for this, for these comments, interestingly enough, comes from the April 23rd, 2007 issue of Forbes magazine. It's about a man that cl clearly understood the purpose of his life. There was a nurse, and she's the one that told the story, who was at one time an emergency room nurse, one night, she witnessed what she considered to be an astonishing leadership act. It was about 10.30 p.m. The room was a mess. I was finishing up some work on the chart before going home. The doctor with whom I love working was debriefing a new doctor who had done a very respectable, competent job, telling him what he had done well and also what he could have done differently. Then he put his hand on the young doctor's shoulder, and he said, when you finished, did you notice the young man from housekeeping who came in to clean the room? There was a completely blank look on the face of the young doctor. The older doctor then said, his name is Carlos. He's been here for three years, and he does a fabulous job. When he comes in, he gets the room turned around so fast that you and I can get our next patients in here quickly. His wife's name is Maria. They have four children, and then he named all the four children and gave the age of each child. The older doctor went on to say he lives in a rented house about three blocks from here in Santa Ana. They've been up from Mexico for about five years. Remember, his name is Carlos, he repeated. Then he said to the young doctor, next week, I would like you to tell me something about Carlos that I don't already know, okay? Now, let's go check on the rest of the patients. The nurse recalls, I remember standing there, writing my nursing notes, literally stunned, and thinking, I have just witnessed breathtaking, breathtaking leadership. 
So I leave you with that story. I urge you to go out and truly pursue your passions in life. I urge you to go out and commit breathtaking leadership at every possible opportunity. I believe if you do that, you will live your life in a way that you're writing an epitaph that not only will those who know you and love you be proud, but even the strangers you touch on the streets will be proud. And if you do that, you will be successful in the most significant of ways. And if all of you do that, if all of you do that, I believe we may never again have to face the moral, ethical, business, and political morass that has been primary contributors to the current economic turmoil. So just know we believe in you, we're counting on you, and we are praying for you. And I thank you for letting me share this part of your life.